Uh, the idea is to have, again, like I did yesterday about the overview of uh, thermal management, I will try today also for the students present in this, uh, in this room to say something more general about heat pipes, how heat pipes is working. And at the end, at the very end, I'm going also to introduce something more about uh, research about heat pipes and uh, novel <coughs> trends uh, in this kind of research. So, uh, very shortly about the heat pipe fundamentals, then I will speak uh, with, I, I will say something about three applications, only to show how the heat pipes can be, um, uh, can be embedded in a, in a practical system. And then I will speak about novel and future applications. So, first of all, again, uh, because I like always to, to link what we are doing with the market and, uh, and what is possible to, to see in the future, uh, the heat pipe market, again, is also uh, growing very fast. And uh, one of the problems of the heat pipe market is that uh, we have uh, really two or three kind of sectors where the heat pipes are really uh, produced, uh, and also countries. Mm. For example, there, uh, there are, let's say, there is a big production of heat pipes for electronics, uh, uh, especially for smartphones and uh, uh, computers, laptop, for example. In my laptop, for sure, there is heat pipes inside somewhere, okay? And, but also for smartphones. Uh, and they are uh, producing 10 or 100 bi uh, million pieces per year. Mm? Uh, so it's really uh, it's a huge amount. Uh, and there is another sector that is more, let's say, linked to the industrial production. So uh, there are uh, bigger heat pipes, for example, for heating, for industrial processes, food process, and so on. Uh, plastic uh, uh, production and so on. But in any case, all of these, uh, uh, let's say, uh, markets are really growing very fast, uh, and we are thinking about 4% increment per year in the next uh, 10 years. So, one of the problems is that uh, the heat pipe seems uh, like a magic stuff. It's working very fine, but still, uh, uh, except the electronics, honestly, we have many sectors where the heat pipes are not used so much. For example, in automotive or in aeronautics, not so much. Huh? In aerospace, yes. Uh, in, a sa on a sat in satellites and so on, we have really, the heat pipes are really used every, every day. Huh? But in other sectors, are not entering uh, really in the, uh, in the, uh, the use, uh, the common use. So I always say that two-phase systems are still scaring for engineering designers. Eh? And the heat pipes is something like magic stuff. What I saw in my experience uh, uh, as also as a consultant, uh, uh, many times the companies are coming to me after having tried themselves uh, and they were not successful because they are thinking, oh, what is a heat pipe? It's a piece of copper. It's not only a copper, it's something more than a copper because the thermal conductivity is much more. And they are putting the heat pipes like that, thinking that it's kind of a material piece of metal, like, but it's not like that. <laughs> the heat pipes sometimes is working, sometimes it's not working, depends on the heat flux and temperature and the, and the boundary conditions. So this is the, one of the problems. So um, in order to have a general introduction, we can divide uh, in, uh, the, say there are two main types of heat pipes. The weak heat pipes, uh, which has uh, the, the inside, which have an inside uh, a weak system, means the capillary system. Mm? And then there are the weakless heat pipes, okay? About the weak heat pipes, we can uh, have the classical weak heat pipes when we have the, the evaporator zone, we are producing the vapor, the vapor is pushed by the pressure in this area where we have the condensation, we are producing the liquid, and the liquid is going back to the evaporator through the capillary suction. Okay, seems very simple, okay? But indeed, it's very complex. Try to have a really a complete numerical simulation of this object is already something. Because it's a, a boiling and evaporation in porous media, condensation in porous media, capillary suction, and so on. So inside, there is a lot of physics, even if uh, when I'm saying like that, it seems very simple, okay? Then we have a looped pipe. This was invented by uh, Professor Majdanik, who is also in the committee, in the international committee, sitting there. And the, the, uh, the looped pipe has uh, the advantage that between the, uh, let's say, the uh, evaporator and the condenser, we may have a very simple tube. 
Mm. So what is uh, important here is that the suction and the capillary pressure is happening in, at the evaporator side, uh, and this is enough uh, to have the to uh, let's say to promote the circulation of the fluid. So that in uh, in this tube where we have the liquid going back uh, to the evaporator, and this part can be long. Mm. So in, in fact, uh, with respect to common heat pipe, we can extend the dimension using a looped pipe. Uh, we, we can have also system with multiple evaporators and one condenser, or even m multiple condensers. So it's a very flexible system. And then we have a system like a capillary loop uh, heat pipe. This is very similar to what we have here. Um, is that the idea is that always in the evaporator we may have enough capillary pressure in order to sustain this complete circulation. Okay? I cannot enter, of course, now in the details. It's a course. Then we have the weakless heat pipes. So the, 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 the king of the weakless heat pipe is, of course, a thermosiphon. This was already used in uh, nuclear power plants and so on. Uh, mainly what is happening is that we have a, again an evaporator is producing the vapor, the vapor is going to the condenser and the condenser is producing the, back the, the, the liquid back but then the liquid is going back to the evaporator because of gravity so a thermosiphon is working by gravity <coughs> or is working by a, a, let's say a force, an acceleration that is bringing back the liquid to the evaporator we, can, we may have a kind of hybrid loop thermosiphon because maybe we can connect uh, with many tubes uh, the evaporator and the condenser and th what is here is, uh, uh, to say is that it's possible to have uh, that the gravity is acting but also the fact that when the liquid is going back we have a higher pressure here because of the evaporator this is pushing let's say the liquid uh, and the vapor, of course, the vapor is gone because uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's clearly uh, has a higher pressure below. But there is a mixing effect. So there is effect of the gravity, but also the effect of a higher pressure at the evaporator zone. And then we have uh, the Palsetti pipe. I already said something uh, yesterday about that, where the fact that we have uh, this is not the same because uh, here when we have the production of vapor, the vapor is pushing the liquid slugs uh, inside this tube because the tube is capillary. So here what is uh, important in a capillary, in a Palsetti pipe is that the tube is small enough that the liquid slugs are filling completely the tube. So that they, when they, you have a vapor uh, uh, plug, the vapor plug is expanding or let's say contracting because of the uh, condensation and, and evaporation, but then this is going to push the liquid slugs, okay? So this means that the, the tube must be capillary in a Pasetini pipe, otherwise this effect is not working. If it's bigger, then we are coming back to this system, which is different. Huh? So we need to have a capillary tube for the Pasetini pipe in order that they are working properly. So again, I said already something about the heat pipe operation. So here, as, I, as we, we said before, the trick is really what is happening in terms of the wick. Are we able to transfer back the liquid to the evaporator? Hmm? How can we do that? Because inside what we have is, in fact, is a, is a, is a thermodynamic cycle. Hmm? So we can represent what is happening in terms of in a, in a TS diagram, for example, or in a PAV diagram. So which are the advantages of heat pipes? The very high thermal conductivity. We may have conductivity of 90, but even more, because uh, we can have a really very, very large conductivity. It depends on the temperature and, and uh, heat fluxes and so on. But the, the, the thermal conductivity can be very high. The power flattening uh, is uh, the con constant condenser heat flux uh, for because the heat pipe is uh, since it's a, as a thermal inertia uh, can absorb uh, a variation of the power at the evaporator mm, and still working with the plus minus the same power at the condenser. Okay, so there is a let's say let's say a, a, a lag between the power at the evaporator and the condenser. This kind of detachment is very important because we spoke about you know, the, uh, the, the PCM effect. Well, this is something like PCM inside because there is a liquid that is evaporating, so there is a latent heat like for a PCM. 
okay? Only that this piece is Im the liquid is embedded inside the heat pipe. Then we have uh, uh, also the, the chance to have a high uh, uh, concentrated heat because uh, inside there is an evaporation. So imagine to have an evaporator mm, and uh, you have uh, at one point we have a hot spot. Uh, but since we have boiling inside, this means that we are able locally to absorb a lot of energy. Okay? Even if we, uh, if we can absorb uh, overall the energy, but if we have some concentrated hot spot, it's still possible that the system is working. Okay? This is another advantage. And then we can control the geometry because we can have a lot of different heat pipes, as you, as you will see afterwards, uh, with different geometries, with different forms, and so on. So this is giving a lot of flexibility. Mm. So only to, to see what we have is that we have heat pipes for the, uh, for the electronics. We have heat pipes for the, the solar uh, panels. Uh, we have uh, banded heat pipes, and so on. So the, the, the different uh, heat pipes are really enormous. This is, for example, this uh, is a heat exchanger made by heat pipe, by uh, flat heat pipes. Huh? So this is another, another uh, possible heat pipe. Here we have a loop heat pipe. We have heat pipe for the, uh, for the uh, LED lighting. And this is a loop heat pipe. And in this case, the loop heat pipe can be, for example, 6 or even 10 meters long. Um, this is uh, why uh, what I said uh, in the overview yesterday, this can be interesting also for the electric vehicles, because in the, in the electric vehicles, what we're looking for now is a kind of thermal network. Uh, we don't have any more, let's say, free energy. So the idea is that we can distribute the, the, the heat in a way uh, that everything is under control. Uh, so we have parts that are uh, cold, the parts that are uh, hot, and we need to uh, uh, link them. But the distance are the distances of a car uh, or even a truck. Uh, so then we need to put together all these p different points. Uh, so the, the loop with pi can be interesting from this point of view. So, in terms of temperatures, also this is very interesting because the uh, heat pipes can work from uh, cryogenic condition, as uh, you saw, so, uh, you see in the you saw in the map yesterday. So from uh, minus 200 degrees, but they can work uh, even at 2,000 degrees uh, if you have a uh, metal heat pipes. So we have a really a very broad range of temperature. Mm. Um, the uh, the one of the problems that we have with the, with the heat pipe is that uh, when we are using different fluids, here you see the fluids from nitro liquid nitrogen, ammonia, methanol, water, uh, potassium, sodium, so alkali metals, for example, lithium, silver, then we need to be, to be uh, uh, compatible with the uh, vessel material, so the, the material of the, of the heat pipes, the, the metal. Mm. Uh, of course, if you are using aluminium, you cannot use water, and, by, and so on and so on. So this is a, a very important point. So the, comp uh, the compatibility between uh, liquid and uh, the metal of the vessel. And uh, the, uh, the, the power that we can absorb is, again, is very, very uh, depending on the temperature and, uh, and of, course, of course, on the, on the fluids. Uh, uh, water is, of, uh, is again a very good material, but we can have also material like uh, alkali metals that are really very interesting with the higher temperature. This is the temperature from 400 Kelvin up to here, 700, uh, 850 Kelvin. Uh, for the types of heat pipes, again, as I said, there are really a lot of heat pipes, uh, and this can be find, uh, found in the market. Uh, uh, this is a company CRRS, but there are many companies and so on producing all these kind of possible heat pipes. Huh? So we have tubular heat pipes, annular heat pipes, baffles heat pipes, vent tubular, uh, heat pipes with sinks, flexible tubular heat pipes, variable conduction heat pipes, diode heat pipes. Uh, the diode heat pipes are quite interesting. Huh? In the diode heat pipes, uh, you have a kind of valve. Uh, so the, the heat, usually when you have a heat pipe, it's not important how to put it, no? Because they are completely symmetric. 
Mm. In this case, with the diode pipes, it's not the case because there's a valve, so there is one direction. The other direction is still working, but a very low if with a very low performance. Okay, so in this case, mm. it's very interesting if you want to be sure that the heat is going only in one direction and not the other. There are limitations. And this is why the problem uh, is coming. The problem from the companies is coming. No, they are trying, and then it's not working. Or why well, something was wrong? Okay. So uh, there are the, the limitations are linked to the capillary limit, the boiling limit, entrainment limit, sonic limit, and viscous limit. So the the capillary limit is the due to the fact that uh, if uh, you design the wick not uh, not not in the right way. Mm, you, are, you don't have enough liquid coming back from the uh, condenser to the evaporator. Mm. So the, the problem of the wick is really very important because uh, it's not only a question of capillary pressure, but also permeability, so wickability, we are saying. So the fact that uh, you would like to have a given flow rate. Mm. Uh, the flow rate means pressure drop because uh, if you have, uh, let's say, the pressure drop is going with the, flow, uh, with the mass flow rate. So what is happening? If you open up the wick uh, pore too much, uh, you are losing the pressure. But of course, the fluid can pass through more easily because the, the pores are bigger. Mm? So you need to find a compromise. The idea is that you need to have something that is, uh, can, can transport a lot of liquid, still having a good pressure, delta P, uh, inside, between the, in, uh, inside the evaporator. So, but this can be, a pro of course, a problem because if you don't have enough liquid coming back from the evaporator, from the condenser to the evaporator, you may have dry out. So, the, at the evaporator, you have, uh, let's say, not enough liquid, so you're going to have dry out. The boiling liquid, the, sorry, the boiling limit uh, is uh, the the um, when you have an, an excessive boiling at the at the evaporator. Mm? When the boiling is too much, uh, the, again, uh, it's not a, maybe the, the liquid is trying to go inside, but there is a zone that is going to dry out because the boiling is very strong. This is happening when, for example, the heat fluxes are too strong, too high. Mm. Then we have an entrainment uh, limit that is due to the fact that uh, when we produce a lot of vapor very fast, uh, uh, the velocity inside the heat pipe of the vapor inside the heat pipe is very high. Mm, the vapor is going to, let's say, to be ejected from the evaporator to the condenser. And what is happening is that uh, there is a liquid trying to go back, but then you have this front of the vapor uh, that, of course, is dragging the liquid away. Mm? So then, again, this is a problem. The, the heat pipe is not work. Then we have the sonic limit, when the velocity of the vapor is even higher, we have choke flow because we, have, we are reaching the sonic limit for the vapor, and again, it doesn't work. This is happening, for example, when they, we have a very peak power huh, in one in, uh, in our evaporator, and the, so in that moment, we have a very high velocity of the vapor. Hmm. And then we have the viscous uh, limit. The viscous limit at low temperature is because uh, they, uh, they, the, f the viscous forces cannot be overcome by the difference of uh, pressure inside, uh, the capillary pressure. Uh, these are the main limits. And this is a very famous pi uh, picture of uh, Peterson in 1994, but you can find in other books, uh, let's say, from uh, Ryan McGlenn and now Marcia Mantelli and so on. There, there are, many, let's say, two or three or four very good books and heat pipes. You can read this. And uh, this is uh, giving you an idea that uh, the heat pipes is working only w in, a, in a given region of power and temperature. So you cannot uh, get the, the, your heat pipes from the shelves and try to put inside if you are not sure of this kind of characteristics. Otherwise, you are going to be in, uh, outside the possible ranges. And this, of course, doesn't work. Okay. About the weak design, you may have a really a lot of the different kind of uh, design for the for the weeks. Uh, um, uh, we in the, in the, for example, this is a classical uh, groove heat pipes. Uh, you can see this is a, an arterial heat pipe where we are going to use this capillary uh, inside. So this is a 
let's say there is no weak here, so we could include, the, let's say, in the weakless, but still there is a, a kind of capillary I include in the, in the weak, uh, because this is kind of weak, okay? Um, there was a discussion about that. <laughs> Uh, and then these are the classical uh, uh, with the um, heat pipe. Uh, so again, uh, in, uh, we have a lot, a lot of uh, uh, possibilities here. And uh, we are still, uh, the, when, uh, if you are coming to uh, the conference, uh, sometimes there is uh, something new, no? Mm -hmm. There is a hybridization of the different possibilities, uh, uh, putting together a kind of weakness without, uh, w with a weak uh, uh, capillary pump uh, with something else. So there are a lot of, uh, uh, there is a lot of research trying to have different system together, let's say. Yeah. The looped pipe, I already told you something about that. <coughs> and uh, what is possible here to say is that we have, uh, uh, what is important uh, is that uh, we have also a, a kind of reservoir. So we have a compensation chamber in a lupid pipe. <coughs> the compensation chamber is very important because we have the heat coming here, <coughs> and then we have the, the, the wick. The vapor is produced, is going, of course, to push uh, uh, the liquid that is forming the condenser. But then we need uh, really to, s uh, to have a suction of the liquid that is formed. Mm? If we don't have a suction of the liquid that is formed, maybe the then in a different uh, geometrical configuration, looking at uh, the fact that it's not, this can be also not capillary, uh, what is happening is that uh, the vapor is passing over the liquid and is going up. So is that we don't have the liquid that is really pushed in this direction. So we need something that uh, is uh, absorbing the liquid uh, from the, uh, to, the, to the evaporator. And uh, so in between, if we have a compensation chamber, uh, for the different condition, what we, uh, we have <laughs> a kind of liquid reservoir. Mm? So that we have uh, still some liquid for th that is going to the evaporator, even if the not so much liquid is coming uh, in a given condition. So the presence of the compensation chamber is important. The drawback is that there is some heat that is going to heat up the liquid in the compensation chamber. So we have a heat leak from the evaporator to the compensation chamber that is not used to have the evaporation huh? the, in, inside the evaporator. Um, what is interesting is that both for all this kind of heat pipe, it's possible to have a lump uh, uh, parameter network modeling. Mm. This is very interesting. For example, uh, in my group, uh, we have done uh, a lumped parameter network modeling for synthetic pipes, groovy pipes, <coughs> looped pipes, uh, pulsating pipes. Okay? Uh, so it's possible to model a looped pipe in a proper way. Mm. So if you want to something, uh, if you want to know something more, we can discuss about that later on, and uh, we can, uh, we, we, I can tell you that the system uh, with the lamp parameter network model is still is working really good. Mm. One of the, the fact is, uh, why are we using a lamp parameter network modeling and not, for example, a CFD for that? Mm -hmm. As I said before, because what is happening here is really very complex. Because uh, the, the phenomena at this, uh, in this, uh, for example, in the evaporator, at least uh, a mesh size of uh, two microns, one micron, to be really very precisely, uh, let's say, analyzed huh? and simulated. But then you have a, the looped pipe is very big. So what is happening is that it's very difficult to find a compromise with CFD that is able to understand what is happening at the micro scale or even meso scales inside the evaporator and what is happening overall in this kind of six meter or two meters piece of metal. Hmm? So this is the, 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 the drawback of having the CFD simulations in these conditions. But the lumpier parameter network models are working pretty well. Huh? The, 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 the drawback for the lumpier parameter network model is it must be tuned, must be, you know, there are fitting parameters. Hmm? For example, the heat leak from the evaporator to the compensation chamber is a tuning parameter. So we know that is about 12%. <laughs> it's not a secret, but uh, 10, 15, 14, well, we don't know exactly. It depends on the geometry, and it's very difficult to, 
to do a simulation, the CFT simulation to understand how much is this leak. Pulsating pipe. The pulsating pipe uh, uh, is, a, is a system that was uh, patented by Akashi in the 1990 uh, and 1991. Akashi was a Japanese researcher. Uh, they were forgotten. So nobody did anything until, the, let's say, the end of 1999, something like that. There was another paper. Maybe in between there were one or two papers only. But really, nothing, nothing, there was no attention to this. Uh, then uh, we, are, we have, at the beginning of 2000, we have papers. Mm, so from uh, Samir Kandeka, Grohl. In fact, uh, this picture is mainly from Samir. Because <laughs> Samir... Eh? Exactly, exactly. The, Samir did uh, this kind of picture for his, his thesis, uh, and, and then we replicated the same <laughs> picture for, uh, for all our papers, but this is coming from Samir. So it's a good way to uh, remember him. So, um, and then there was again a pause. So between the 2002, 2003, huh? Until 2008, there was nothing. I mean, I, you can find a couple of papers, uh, nothing like that. Um, then we, we started, uh, it's not only me, but other also with other researchers, but it was more growing attention. But again, I remember when I presented this in, uh, in the conference, in the IHSP conference, uh, I was really, we had two, three papers only. Then in the last conference of the International Aid Piper Conference, uh, 20, 30%. 30% of the papers were about <laughs> pulsating pipes. <laughs> so it was really a big jump, right? So um, this is, let's say, let's, uh, that this system is still, uh, uh, is still uh, under the, the, let's say, a kind of uh, exploitation. So we don't know exactly <laughs> if at the end it's going to be in the, uh, let's say, something applicable for something, really. We have a lot of... Uh, of, uh, of uh, works in the labs, huh? there are very few applications at the moment. Uh, there is, I know, one or two or three. There is a company. There is even a company producing now. There are not only now, and there is not only one company, but two, three years ago, there was only one company. And the company was uh, Tam Avant from, uh, from Professor Ma, Hogmin Ma, mm, in US. And uh, now there are other companies uh, trying to do something, Kalios, for example, in Europe, and uh, also ACT, and so on. So on. there are other companies trying to do something. And what is possible to see is that they are going to do something in direction of, uh, let's say, cold plates. So they are using the, the pulsating pipes as a way to announce the performance of a cold plate. So they are embedding the system inside. There is a very good one. There is a very good one uh, uh, from Kalios. If you see in the, in the internet, you can see there's something like an embedded uh, pulsating pipe, which is uh, pretty interesting. So we are still, uh, uh, let's say, in the transition between the labs and the industrial applications. So what is interesting is again, again the, the system is working, as I said in a way that uh, we have uh, a capillary tube, and so we can push the, uh, the liquid, the, um, liquid slack, uh, because the liquid is completely filling the tube. I don't want, uh, this is again a lesson, I cannot uh, work on that. And uh, in, uh, as for the other heat pipes, we, have, we don't need external pumping work. There is a simple construction. This is something that is attracting a lot of attention, because it's simple, it's a tube. So uh, nothing more than that. Low manufacturing cost, less size and weight due to the to a lower mass flow, high fluxes, and the possibility to work without gravity. So very fast now. Uh, some cases of uh, using the for using the heat pipes in uh, application LED thermal control. The LED are, let's say, a, a very known uh, no technology for lighting, very efficient and so on. But uh, the temperature is, uh, of course, uh, is, a, is a, big, a big problem uh, because the failure rate is increasing a lot with the temperature. So for example, and also the, the uh, output, uh, uh, the light output from the LED is uh, decreasing uh, with, the, with the temperature of the junction. So 
the, an increase of 20% uh, of, uh, uh, of temperature in the junction leads to at least 5% less output in terms of uh, illumination. Mm. And in terms of light time, a lifetime of LEDs, even worse. Mm. So these are, let's say, from uh, Philips uh, Luminets. Uh, so these are the usual, this should be the usual lifetime. But if we increase the temperature, mm, we have, let's say, that the lifetime is going uh, down and down, and, uh, and it's not working really anymore. Mm. So we have, uh, let's say, that uh, uh, the, uh, the mean time before failure is halved compared to running at 25 degrees if we have 40 degrees. Mm. So this is becoming very important, for example, for external illumination. So no, for the, uh, in India, can be <laughs> in, uh, in other hot countries, can be really a problem. So, for example, the, we had this uh, consultancy that was a LED plate, eh? and they wanted to reject the heat. Uh, also, in uh, let's say uh, this was for an external illumination. Eh? So the idea was uh, to connect the LED plate with the cover plate, eh? because uh, be, because uh, since this was a, a lamp for outside, the uh, outdoor lamp. Eh? there was a problem of uh, impermeability. So you, don't, uh, you need to avoid any uh, water coming in and so on. Uh, so in fact, at the end, we studied a, problem, we studied a solution with using heat pipes. Mm. This is a, possible, uh, is a possible case. Photovoltaic system. This is for concentrated photovoltaic. So we have uh, the, uh, uh, the concentration of uh, solar rays going here. Mm. So the light is entering in a cone, and then uh, the cone, uh, the light here you have a kind of uh, a lens, and then you have uh, the the, sol, uh, the the solar rays that are concentrated one point. The heat flux here is huge, is huge because imagine, no, you have already 800 water meter square, meter square, and you have a lens, uh, you can burn something, right? So it's the same effect. So how to cool this, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, situation? For confidentiality reason, I cannot give the solution, but I can tell you something, <laughs> like uh, the fact that uh, we have, in fact, here we have a, 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 spread, a heat spreader, but we use again the cover. We use again all the system using heat pipes. So there were heat pipes going from here to, uh, uh, to this position. So in fact, there was an array of heat pipes in order to have all the surface of the cone usable for the uh, heat, as a heat spreader. Mm. Uh, th this is another work, induction uh, cooktop. Uh, again, the problem here was that uh, they had the uh, AGBTs uh, uh, with a temperature that must be less than 100 degrees and the uh, temperature of the junction 114. And one of the problems that they had is that where you have the IGBTs here, the temperature was not uniform. Hmm? So what we uh, have done is was very simple. We put a heat pipe in this position. Huh? And uh, again, uh, I, don't can, I cannot enter in the details for, for confidentiality reasons, but the, the, the in principle was uh, very simple. So we, we intro introducing heat pipes in this hole you have a, a higher te uh, um, average thermal conductivity of this part where you put the IGPTs, and then in this case, you have a very uniform uh, heat all, uh, all over. And th the fact is that what it was uh, very interesting for the company is that at the end, uh, they, they could even uh, save, uh, the f the, let's say, the, the fact that they had two systems, uh, separate system, they put together in one single, uh, in one single element. Uh, so in fact, there was a better use of space. It's uh, uh, only two blowers instead, instead of four. So it's again a, an adventure in terms of cost. Uh, and then uh, you can see here that at the end there should be one value that uh, they, they save something like uh, uh, 0 0.174 kilogram of aluminum and so on in space. So can I have two minutes more? Novel and future applications of uh, heat pipes. Uh, 
uh, electrical machines, uh, heat storage, battery thermal management, space nuclear reactor system, and waste heat recovery, and maybe two other the heat pipe developments, the new manufacturing systems, and flexible heat pipes. So, uh, in uh, EV uh, uh, vehicles, uh, one of the problems is also the cooling of the electrical motors. Mm? And uh, how to do that uh, is, uh, is becoming very, very important. Um, and in fact, uh, in the, let's say, the, the, uh, the, the problem is that, like for the LED, an increase of 10 degrees uh, of the temperature of the, of the rotors can decrease the life of the rotors itself of one half. Mm? Imagine that the electric car is uh, thought to uh, have, uh, let's say, one million kilometers in terms of uh, battery and motors. So. There's a lot of kilometers more than an, an IC engine in this sense, okay? However, the temperature is really a, a, a very critical point. Mm? So it's not only a point because uh, for the batteries, but also for the motors. And we are always thinking about the battery thermal management, battery thermal management. Yeah, it's a, a very important. We know that. Huh? But also the motors itself is, is, a, is a very critical from the point of view of the thermal management. Uh, so... My HP can be uh, interesting, but in this case, we have an acceleration. It, it depends if you put in the stator or in the rotor. Is it, pos is it possible to put in the rotor or not? Well, we did some research on that uh, because uh, we did some research that is not on the motors, but is on the grinding machine. So on the grinding machine, we put uh, a pulsating heat pipe. This is a possible application for a pulsating heat pipe. So we have, this is the grinding machine, we put the pulsating pipe, and in fact, because of the, of the geometry of the pulsating pipe, uh, it works a lot. It works really very good. It works in a very good way. Mm. So this is given us the chance, uh, let's say, the idea that the pulsating pipes can be a good solution for the, for even for the electric motors. So this can be a new trend for the future. I didn't explore yet, but uh, it's something to understand. Huh? There, are, there, is, uh, there are a lot of, of um, uh, the idea could be even single loop heat pipes or one pulse, uh, no, single, single loop pulsating pipes or a unique pulsating pipe going around the, uh, the rotor of the engine. Thermal storage. The thermal storage is, of course, interesting because, again, we have long distances uh, and usually we have a single phase but not to think in the future to two-phase systems. Again, because uh, we can increase the efficiency and so on. And, uh, there are already studies in this direction and uh, about uh, the use of uh, heat pipes plus PCM. Okay? We, uh, we said about PCM before, but uh, the hybridization between a system with PCM and the passive pipe, again, can be very interesting. Battery thermal measure, we said about that uh, already, so I don't want to enter now in the, in the discussion, but uh, it's possible that uh, we may have different systems. Mm? Uh, and uh, the, the, the I think that we are we just, uh, let's say, two months ago, when it was in uh, the end of November, I submitted a project with uh, two companies. Uh, about the use of heat pipes for battery thermal management. So there is even from the companies there is more and more attention. They are very interested to the fact that uh, the, the, uh, the system can be passive, so they don't have extra power. Uh, and uh, can be, can, uh, can, uh, we can obtain a very uniform distribution of temperature inside the battery pack. So there are big advantages, and uh, this is a very good trend for a heat pipe world. And the, again, as I said, it's also very interesting in electric vehicles to use the heat pipes because uh, with, the, with the idea to have a thermal network, uh, like for a satellite. <laughs> At the end, uh, let's say, the people that is working, no, the researchers who are working in, uh, for satellites, they know already that in, for a satellite you need to build a thermal network. Huh? That was not done for the, for, for the uh, cars until now, but can be very interesting. Then we have also the uh, um, very interesting application for the nuclear reactor system for space. Huh? 
Space and uh, nuclear reactor system are very important because uh, this can uh, change. This can be really a breakthrough in terms of technology for space uh, exploration. And uh, but uh, in this case, uh, since the reactors is very very compact, and it's very small. We are thinking about one megawatt, huh? five megawatts, so very very small reactors. Mm? The uh, very compact, uh, lightweight. So in this case, again, the heat pipes can be really a uh, game changing. Uh, uh, tool. And then waste heat recovery. Again, uh, this is another application where uh, heat pipes, vapor chambers, pulsated heat pipe can be very interesting. I don't want to spend too much time because the waste is too long. Uh, another point, uh, I know that, for example, also in Madras, uh, you have uh, here, IIT Madras, you have a 3D metal printer. Mm? Uh, we are trying now to work uh, with the 3D metal painting of uh, heat pipes, mm, which is, of course, is, ve is uh, very costly, so it's not for a uh, grid production, but for example, for applications like the nuclear reactors or for satellites, for space application, this can be very interesting. And uh, there are a lot of work, uh, there is a lot of work on that, and it's growing. Uh, this is again very interesting, which is the main advantage. Uh, of course, uh, the advantage is that we can uh, embed the heat pipe in the in the in a given for in a given plate and a given geometry, so we don't have contact thermal resistances anymore. So everything is together. So this is really the ma the major uh, interest in that. Yeah, and then uh, last one, uh, uh, thermal sprays again. Uh, I well, I don't want to. Uh, I would like to save a little bit of time. Flexible heat pipes, give me one second. Uh, we are also working on that. Trying to, in fact, what we are trying to do is to embed the pulsating heat pipe in a piece of plastic in order to increase the uh, thermal conductivity of uh, plastic sheets. Hmm? So there is a foil of plastic. Usually the thermal conductivity is 0 0.2 watt meter Kelvin. Huh? Then we reach about 6. It's not too bad, right? Of course, maybe for many applications it's not enough. But there are applications where we are looking for a kind of a, a plastic foil which has a good conductivity. The hope is to arrive even more, to arrive to a factor, let's say, able to reach at least the steel. So 16 water meter Kelvin could be a very big success, okay? This is what uh, we are doing. The advantages are first that is also an electrical insulator, hmm? so yeah, and so on. So I don't want to spend too much time, but it's very interesting. For smartphone, for example, huh? this can be interesting. Okay. Sorry, I was very fast in the innovation side, on the innovation side, but I spent a little bit too much time in, uh, in the introduction. But I hope that you appreciate, I mean, the overall, let's say, synthesis of the heat pipe world. Thank you so much. So thank you, Marco, again. Uh, so in the interest of time, what I suggest is we have a lunch tea break now. For 10 minutes, we can discuss with Marco if you have any questions while taking tea. And then we'll come back in about 10 minutes, OK? So to start the next uh, talk. <laughs>